Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob Hegland, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about graph neural networks. Now, if you're a machine learning practitioner, if you are a researcher, if your business relies on machine learning in any way, shape, or form, or you're just interested in machine learning in general, then you need to know about graph neural networks because they are absolutely sweeping the conferences right now, and they are supposed to be a highly impactful technology in the next coming years. In today's video, we'll be talking about two primary things. First, we'll be talking about why you might want to use graphs to model your data. And I'll be talking about a few of the interesting design choices that you can make in the process of modeling your data as a graph. Next, we'll be talking about a few of the algorithms that you can actually use to learn in an end-to-end -end manner on graph structured data. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. Now, before we get into the main topic of this video, I'm going to ask you to think of two or three uh, colleagues, coworkers, or friends who might also be interested in the topic of this video. If you watch this video until the very end, and I'm not saying you will, but if you do, then please consider recommending this video to them, directly to them. Uh, word of mouth communication is so important when you're talking about cutting edge technologies like this, and I really appreciate it. And if you appreciate videos like this, then please consider hitting that like button for the YouTube algorithm. The YouTube algorithm is kind of like word of mouth communication, but from my perspective, it's a lot more mysterious in how it actually works. And with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. So as I said earlier, we're going to be focusing on the very basics of graph neural networks in this talk. And in the first part of this talk, I want to answer two primary questions. Why do you want to use graphs to model your data in the first place? And then why do you want to use graph neural networks to learn on graph structured data? And in the second half of the talk, we're going to be talking about some of the mathematical foundations of graph neural networks. So let's answer this first question first and foremost. Why do we want to use graphs in the first place? So graphs are a very interesting type of model because they model entities and the connections between them. And that might sound kind of vague and nebulous right now, but we're going to get into some more specific examples really soon here. So a basic graph is defined by two things, two numbers. And you don't have to know what these numbers are right now. I'm going to talk about that in one second. But these two numbers define a unique graph topology or a structure. Now we understand V to be the set of vertices or nodes on this graph, and you can understand these as entities. So this might be like an airport or airports in a network, uh, autonomous vehicles, road segments on a road, or reinforcement learning agents, anything that you can really imagine. And then E is a set of links or edges, and these are some type of connection between entities. So this might be the distance between two airports, uh, some type of correlation. Uh, there, there's many different ways that you can define a connection between entities. And what's interesting about graphs is that they don't rely on a Euclidean frame of reference. So there is no real way to define an up or down in graphs. Um, so like in a social network, as an example, there's no real up direction, right? There's no north, there's no east and west. There's just kind of people and their connections. So this is why graphs are a very interesting type of model. So to answer this question of why we might want to use graphs, I'm going to come at it from two different angles. The first angle is based on reality, and that many real-world systems can be modeled as graphs. So as an example, we have some of the busiest airports in the United States right here. And my question to you is, how else would we want to model, say, delays between airports? It's important that you have connections between airports in your model, because, of course, delays at one airport will affect the delays at another airport. But if we use something like a multi-layer perceptron, well, that doesn't really model the structure too well. You just have a big feature vector and there's no sense of, you know, structure or locality. And if you used a convolutional neural network, well, you might be able to assign delays to each pixel in this image, but that's not really an elegant solution because you have so many pixels that are just going to be empty and not provide any information. So a graph really does seem like the most compressed form of this information that we have here, of you know, capturing the connections between airports. So the other angle I'm going to attack this question from is that of data efficiency. So if you are a machine learning researcher or practitioner, then you know that multilayer perceptrons are uh, universal function approximators. And in theory, they can learn everything from end to end if you give them enough data and enough layers and enough training time. But in many cases, we don't want to have to label unnecessarily large amounts of data. And we can overcome this by actually increasing the structure in our model. And the story with GNNs is very similar to the story with convolutional neural networks, where you increase the structure of your model to fit the type of data that you are looking at. So for example, in multilayer perceptrons over here on the right, or on the left, sorry, uh, there's no real structure 
right? You just have a feature vector and its features that it kind of ha it has to learn everything from end to end, basically. But if we have, say, pixels in an image, well, we know that nearby pixels should have some type of similarity, so we can send a convolutional filter over our image and collect useful features. Similarly, with graph neural networks, um, we can have some type of convolutional filter that acts over the graph, and it extracts locally useful information on a graph. Now, the main difference between a, a image between an image and a graph is that a graph can have sort of crazy structures. It's not a regular structure, unlike an image. In fact, images are special cases of graphs. What is this known as? This is known as a relational inductive bias, when we actually increase the structure of our model to fit some type of structure that we believe the data that reflects real world data. And they can be very useful for data efficiency purposes. Now in this talk so far, we have talked about very basic graphs with vertices and edges, and there's no real complexity yet. You can increase the complexity quite a bit on graph models. So you can change the edge type. You could have a weighted edge or a binary edge. You could have edge directionality, where you might have asymmetric interactions between entities. You could have features on your nodes. You could have the features on your edges, or you could have no features at all. You could also include temporal aspects. So if your features change over time or if your topology changes over time, and these are very interesting types of models. Uh, and there are other complications that just get crazy. So you can get into multigraphs, uh, hypergraphs or complex networks. And you know, the sky really is the limit with how complex you can make your graph model to fit some real world system that you're trying to model. So far, I hope I've convinced you that graphs can be very powerful models for real world data. But now the question is why we want to use graph neural networks on these data to learn end to end. So graph neural networks combine two key factors that I think make them so effective on these types of data. They have a strong relational inductive bias, which means that they explicitly account for the graph structure of your data. And they also have a generalized feature extraction that you get from backpropagation uh, machine learning, essentially. Now, there are many potential benefits that these models offer as well. So they can provide the ability to model new systems. Uh, they can provide data efficiency over perhaps less efficient methods. You can train your models faster because you have such a strong relational inductive bias. And in general, you can possibly increase model accuracy compared to, say, a multilayer perceptron or some other model that does not explicitly account for the graph structure of the data. So hopefully at this point, you are thoroughly convinced that graphs can be very powerful models for your data and that graph neural networks provide a very interesting opportunity to model new systems, to provide higher prediction accuracies, whatever you're looking for. Now, before we get into the mathematical details of graph neural networks, we're going to go over some of the interesting types of problems that graph neural networks can actually solve. So of course, they can solve unsupervised problems, but the type of unsupervised problems they can solve are sort of broader than with other classes of models. So you can do things with node edge or graph clustering, where you're trying to use your embeddings to find some type of similar similarity between nodes, edges, or graphs. You can also do link prediction, where you're trying to predict if a link will exist at a future time between two nodes. And you can do things like graph generation. You can also do things in the supervised domain, of course. So you can have node edge or graph classification or regression. And this is where you're going to be using embeddings to predict based on known data. And if you want to check out some of these papers, uh, they have some very interesting methods that they propose. Now, our general goal with any machine learning algorithm operating on graph structured data is to embed this graph information into some space. And then we can use that embedding to solve a problem, right? Now, older methods, we'll understand these as shallow methods uh, or non-neural network based models, did not accomplish this so well. So DeepWalk and Notebook, um, these methods have generally fallen out of favor with researchers for several reasons. So they may not share parameters, they may not scale that well, and they may lead to overfitting as well. And they may only work in the transductive case, where you only have uh, nodes, it only will work on nodes that you see during training. And that's not ideal, obviously, if you want to generalize. Now, GNNs actually solve these problems, which means that they're a very interesting type of algorithm because they share parameters and they can generalize to inductive tasks where you're working on nodes that you did not see in your training set.
Hey everybody, so when I was making this video originally, I didn't mean for it to turn into a half hour long lecture on graph neural networks. I kind of want to keep these videos as smaller bite-sized things that you can watch at any time. So here's what I did is I split this talk into two videos, and this is the first video, and I'll have the second video linked down in the description below, and that will go more into the mathematical details of graph neural networks. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it in the future, then please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to start a discussion about the things that we talked about here today, then please feel free to do so down below in the comments section. If you made it this far in the video, then it obviously brought you some value, and it'll probably bring your friends, coworkers, and colleagues some value as well. So please at least consider taking an extra minute out of your day and sharing it with people that you think would get some value out of it as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.